In the name of the true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. One of the defining images of modernity occurs at the end of the film, The Wizard of Oz, when Dorothy, the Cowardly Lion, the Tin Man, and the Scarecrow find themselves in the presence of the great and powerful Oz. Amid smoke and flame, thunder and flashing light, a booming voice addresses the petitioners who have made their, their precarious pilgrimage to the Emerald City to beseech the wizard to get Dorothy home to Kansas. It's Toto, the dog, who pulls back the curtain to display a gray-haired man wearing a cravat, who's pulling levers and switches and shouting into a microphone. It becomes immediately clear that there is no Wizard of Oz. He is a fake wizard, a counterfeit guru, an artificial god. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, he says, as his puny insignificance is revealed. Many people suspect that just such a ruse of falsity can be found behind some curtain in any and every church, that there is no God, but that the machinations lit by candlelight behind stained glass, obscured by the smoke of incense, are nothing but the petty performances of puny people trying to play out our parts in costumes that we can't ever really fit. They look at a place like this, at people like us, and at me, I suppose in particular, and say, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. There is no God. Whatever you think is going on here, it is fake, counterfeit, artificial. You might think that the release this week of the spectacular images from outer space would tend to reinforce the cynical critique that a worldview shaped by religion is by definition small, narrow, and in denial, since the universe is so much more vast than we imagined, than anything imagined on the altar or in the scriptures. How can we keep on telling stories of Adam and Eve, of Noah and his ark, or of Abraham and Sarah, when we know, or at least we should know or could know, that these stories never happened? Don't these images pull back the curtain of our religious traditions, showing, this, showing us a scientific explanation for the world? when we can see in vivid color the distant and mysterious past of the, immense, the immensity of the universe and explain its origins scientifically, when we can see for ourselves what a teeny tiny place we occupy in the vast expanse of interstellar space, we should sit in silence, in awe, when we look at the image that was released this past week from NASA's Webb Telescope of SMACS 0723, SMACS 0723. The image shows us a speck of the sky as small as a grain of sand from where we stand, a tiny sliver of the vast universe, NASA says. SMACS 0723 is a galaxy cluster as it appeared 4.6 billion years ago with many more galaxies in front of and behind the cluster in that marvelous image. Yes, we should sit in silent awe to contemplate the privilege of perceiving light that has traveled 4.6 billion years to reach us. More profound silence when we consider that according to NASA, that same image revealed light from one galaxy that traveled for 13.1 billion years. 13.1 billion years. It's a tiny speck on the image, but it's there a speck of light in a sand speck of sky many, many billions of miles and many, many billions of years away from us. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. 
The scientific details of the expanse and origins of the universe might seem to put the lie to everything you'll hear about here in church or find in the pages of the Bible. Here on earth of a Sunday morning, we are asked to look back to Abraham, who, if he was a real person, might have lived around 4,000 years ago. But neither science nor history can say whether or not Abraham was a historical figure who actually existed. It's entirely possible that he did not. Abraham might be a character assigned to represent the archetypal patriarch of monotheistic, monotheistic faith. He might be a mythical figure who stands in for whomever it was to whom God first revealed his intention to be in a covenant relationship with at least some segment of humankind. Amen, I say. So be it. An archetypal mythical Abraham is as real and as true to me as a historical one, since the covenant with God is just as real and as true. The covenant that the Lord made was to be God to Abraham and to his offspring, to give Abraham the land of the Canaanites and to make him the father of many nations. Two out of three clauses of such a covenant would seem problematic to me since they involve real estate on the one hand and fertility on the other, especially considering that Abraham was 99 years old at the time. If you ask me, the real substance of the matter is the everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. But the matters of real estate and fertility were apparently of some concern to Abraham and his wife Sarah too. Now we don't really know how the Lord revealed himself to Abraham, who was first called Abram. Genesis says that the Lord spoke to him. It says that the Lord came to Abram in a vision and that the Lord appeared to him. All of this is vague, but that was, of course, like 4,000 years ago. Except for this one day, recounted in the 18th chapter of Genesis, when the Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre. Scholars tell us that Mamre was a real place located near the city of Hebron, in what's now the West Bank, a bit south of Jerusalem. Abraham and Sarah were camping there for a while by the Oaks of Mamre, for the shade, I suppose. And Abraham looked up and saw three men standing near him, and the text is exceedingly clear that we are to understand that these three men are a theophany, a manifestation of the living God. Some people will tell you that they were angels. Others will say that it was the Lord and two angels. Our tradition sees in this moment the appearance of the triune God. For reasons that I cannot fathom, the editors of the lectionary who decide what it is we'll read every Sunday morning tell us to stop reading this story before the appearance is over. What's left out as a result is the account of Sarah laughing at the absurd promise that she, in her old age, would give birth to a son, the child that she had much prayed for and longed for it and desired when she was younger. Sarah, who must have been in her 90s too, was listening from inside the tent to her husband's conversation with the three men, and she heard the outrageous promise that she would at last become a mother, and she laughed when she heard it. There's something wonky in the text here, but the divine visitor gets the last word when he asks pointedly and rhetorically, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? And then the Lord challenges Sarah on her insistence that she did not laugh, and the Lord said, oh yes, you did laugh. The scene as it unfolds is the near opposite of the scene from The Wizard of Oz. It is Sarah who hides herself behind the curtain of the tent flaps, hoping not to be noticed by an actual personification of the great and powerful Lord of the universe. Sarah can see her for herself that there is nothing fake, counterfeit, or artificial about this divine visitor. God shows himself to be real and available to the point of making house calls. 
Pay no attention to that lady behind the tent flap. Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? Now cast your eyes, if you can, from the Oaks of Mamre in that very specific spot, not far from Hebron, something like 4,000 years ago, to that other very specific spot, a tiny speck of light in a sand speck of sky, many, many billions of miles and many, many billions of years away from us. In between these two and beyond them and all around them is the domain of God's creation. The same God who was at work in the world 13.1 billion years ago was at work by the oaks at Mamre 4,000 years ago and is at work with, he, with us here today. The immensity and the age of the universe do not in any way undermine the reality of the Lord who makes house calls and who expresses his intention to establish an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring. We're much better off, it seems to me, if we can see the truth of both instances. Another of the astounding pictures that NASA released this week was of the group of galaxies known as Stefan's Quintet. NASA tells us that the image contains over 150 million pixels and is constructed from almost 1,000 separate image files. The complexity of these images and the sophistication required to produce them should not be understated. Science has given us a way to see things that as far as we know, only God has ever seen before. No wonder we find those images so jaw-dropping. But the complexity and the sophistication, like the sheer immensity of the universe we can perceive, and the sheer age of the light we are perceiving, 13 billion years old, could serve to discourage us from believing that the God who could create such a universe has any interest at all in paying attention to the likes of you and me. To remind us that God does indeed regard the likes of you and me, we have the precise address of the Oaks of Mamre, where the Lord was known to have visited and to have chatted for a time with the Father of Faith and with Sarah his wife. Neither Abraham nor Sarah could have imagined the expanse of the universe that was created by the word of the Lord who sat with them by the Oaks of Mamre. If you tried to tell them, they would surely have laughed at the absurdity of the thought that we can take pictures of light from 13 billion years ago. Just as some may laugh at the suggestion that Abraham was 99 years old, and just as Sarah laughed at the suggestion that she would bear a child in her old age. It's easy to laugh, but it's not really that hard to believe in a God who makes house calls, even if he has been at work in the world for 13 billion years or more. It's not really that hard to believe in a Lord who wants to establish an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. Yes, NASA's photos of the ancient universe do indeed pull back the curtain so that we can see what's really going on in the universe and what's gone on for billions of billions of years before us. And what we see behind the curtain is that there is no fake wizard there, no counterfeit guru, no artificial god. There is a universe that is billions and billions of years old. And there are three men sitting by the oaks of Mamre, a manifestation of the divine making a house call and stopping to ask, is anything too wonderful for the Lord? 
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.